You had Jangal Raj, which you called Ayaram Gayaram sometimes, but you, then you can also justify that in the name of free speech, free action. What you did here was you allowed a zone of activity, permissible, affirmative, but you cannot you cannot say that I will go beyond that permissible and thereby violate indirectly the negative code also. What is that permissible activity, the affirmative code of conduct? One is if faction or a split till the 91st amendment. They gave you an escape route, advisedly, consciously. That has gone. It was there. So, well, is the constitution famous thought that along with a negative code of conduct, so as not to stifle you completely, we give you an escape route, exit route of faction or one third or whatever it was called. Well, Second, merger. Third, and this is actually well, is the most important part of tension. Well, is elections barring a few cases, well, in the days of 1960s, etc. Well, there used to be a very strong, large number of independents. Independents have now dwindled, the statistics show. Well, is. Even then, in terms of 545 Lok Sabha, you had hardly 30-40. Well, but well, the independents commanded a coordination. Well, my father also got into Lok Sabha on an independent party investigate. So I know that time, was Mr. Nath Pai, so many people. But today, Malas, even then, party democracy was, everything was based on party. You got a ticket and you fought and you won because the party projected you as its candidate. That is now, Malas, much, much truer after the 60s, 70s onwards. Today, Malas, the number of independents compared to the 60s would be, Malas, a fraction. So it's party-based democracy. You like it or not, Malas, it's not for anybody to question. We've chosen it, but there's nothing perfect. Some people say US is better, some people say European, but this is what we have chosen. And now, this third, third balance. Third point is what? What is the so point? One is, well, uh, split is split, permissible, split, merger second is merger. Submerge. Third now. The third point. Third comes with the light of what I said just now. The whole idea of the 10th schedule is resign and recontest. That's what is stopping you from doing. You enter the door through this door and then you retain your ministership and seat. While exiting through the other door, sorry, not permissible. Resign, have the courage of your conviction. Now, you, you are a very vocal freedom speaker. You have the courage of your conviction. Which Justice Jeevan Reddy referred to in that extract. I'll be dealing with some of that. It was not in the context of the tension. But I'll be dealing with that. Some judgments have referred to it. I'm going to suggest that because this is the core question my Lord is Narsimha asked, my Lord asked earlier. What do we do when an overwhelming set of people want to express dissent? Nine tenths, let's say nine out of ten, brothers. let's take an extreme example. How do we balance and countervail these two well, competing balances? The 10 schedule says you can go thus far in balancing, not further. Whereas if you are so much for free speech, courage of your conviction, this is a rotten party, I can't say, resign and contest, recontest, what is the problem? Then well, the fourth is the exemptions. There is a, well, apart from well, there is exemption clause, condonation, whatever, all that is given there. Now, what we are, we have to see is that if a constitutional amendment balances the prohibitory with the affirmative part, you cannot find an excuse to circumvent the prohibitory part by going beyond the four avenues of the affirmative part, now only three. Faction is gone. Now, let us take this further. Because that's your Lordship's query. I'm sorry, Malas, there is a fifth one. I, I forgot. There's a fifth one. I'm now breaking it up. There is a fifth uh, balancing on the affirmative side. You are so concerned about free speech, you are resigning is one, or you absolutely hate where you are. You go to the election commission and start your uh, uh, para 15 proceeding that I am the real party. But you do that without indulging into the prohibitory part. That is well as keeping the sanctity of the 10th schedule. Now I am addressing the core dilemma of my lords. Let me develop it well as, in a minute. That's also a statutory remedy, lower than constitutional. So the fifth is, brothers, now actually only four because that faction is gone, split is gone. So four. The fourth would be file a complaint to the election commission, say, look, nine of us are standing here, we are the party, recognize us. Till then, don't do any prohibitory activity. The election commission will or will not recognize you and is subject to challenge. What does this do, brothers? This maintains the sanctity of the 10th schedule and maintains the negative and the, uh, the affirmative parts of the 10th schedule. What does my Lord normally prefer? A option I give your Lordships which reduces the other option to vanishing point or an option which harmonizes both 
elementary principles tell your lordship by 1000 cases that your lordship prefers the harmonization approach. Elementary common sense shows that my learned friend stand reduces the tension due to vanishing point. It is as good as a dead letter or a repeal. Which is better? The answer is self-evident. Now, Malus, here, just see, Malus, how, how this dead letter vanishing point arises. You don't resign with the courage of your convictions to fight another election. You don't go to the election commission till much later. Almost a month, just under a month after 21st, you went to Guwahati. 19th, you go to the election commission. Two days before a month is ending. You don't seek condonation. What you do is, bullets, what I call a three steps novel procedure to annihilate the 10th schedule. It's a three step novel procedure. Step one of which is disable the speaker by giving him a mere notice. So the man can't touch you on the 10th schedule. Just see the bullets, my submission of harmonization versus vanishing point. Step two of this bullets, uh, sinister three step novel procedure is to forward resolutions parallelly to the governor who in turn makes it well as the basis of a trust vote direction and the final step three is the act of being sworn in as chief minister sorry the act of being sworn in as chief minister with malaz another party fully supporting in whose lap you were in guwahati now malaz i i am not on the just kindly consider you don't follow the affirmative part which gives you play in the joints and leeway, flexibility. You don't resign. You don't merge. The most important interesting point is you don't merge. Just, just see for a minute that B, poor B. Malus, if you are sitting in their lap and they are supporting you, at the last minute instead of them becoming chief minister, they make you chief minister. What is the problem with merging? So, well as you say, to hell with the 10th schedule, it gives me an escape route, I'll ignore it. I'll go to the three steps. And the language, without opening it, Malus, without opening it, where his original political party merges with another political party, and he claims and any other members of the original political party have become members of such political party, or as the case may be, of a new political party formed by such merger. Well, as this is directly snooking a nose at the 10th schedule, which is a constitutional creation. It is, well, I am sorry to use colloquial, it is actually saying, look, to hell with the 10th schedule, we have made this three-step procedure. Why on earth could you not recontest, resign, merge, or the fourth one? Condonation, I am not always getting into, that is another one. Go to the election commission and file a complaint then. On 21st, instead of Surat and Guwahati, why did you not file the well, election commission? So, this is the first answer. This is one of the best answer at least I can give to the direct question, but there is a consequential answer further ahead. <laughs> I am putting it against myself and trying to answer because I put this question to myself and Lordship asked it yesterday. Now, Malaz, a possible argument will be twofold. That is no argument because Malaz, how it works in actual law, a fact is not an argument against me. If the law is a prohibitive and a affirmative, then you jolly well follow it. That is the object of creating a constitution. But now I am giving an answer against me even though it does not arise in law. The answer is, what happens Mr. Singhvi, if between me, that is they, applying to the EC and doing these things which Mr. Singhvi is advising them to do, the speaker disqualifies you. I am putting it bluntly against myself, Wallace. Wallace, first answer is, so what? Why was the tension you created, Wallace? Is the speaker doing something unknown to law? But there is a better answer. If he disqualifies you, there is full judicial, this is on the basis you wrongly, you said there is full judicial you review. No, but you can't, well, your lordships can't find a solution to everything which the constant assembly, uh, the constant uh, amending people did not make. What is this answer that what do I do, I will be disqualified? Well, jolly well you will be disqualified because the 1985 framers gave this power to the speaker. Is the possibility of an abuse ever the test of the power or its existence was, can it be, otherwise how will your lordship decide anything, Malus? Yes, that phrase comes from Rajdarayan versus Rajdarayan versus Indira Gandhi. Possibility of abuse is not the test of power. Give that citation. Hindustan, Hindustan judgment. One Hindu, Hindustan, Hindustan construction, some judgment is there. Also, the sun construction. Abuse of power, power cannot be the. Your officer should judge everything. Oh, what will happen? What may happen? That's not the question. Here, and your lordship is talking of lesser cases. 
Here the constitution will amend it to give this power. And the apprehension is I will not go on 21st to speaker, I, uh, to uh, EC, I will go to Guwahati because I am scared of a disqualification. Now, well, let, us, let us look at the second. I am giving a lot of extreme examples against myself. You have a full review possible. My review is much more truncated. It takes one year for me to get this hearing before your lordships. Your review is immediate on a uh, wrongful uh, decision against the speaker. And your lordship knows Kyoto says after final decision of the speaker, you can get a stay of that. You can't get a stay while he is deciding. You can get it afterwards. Of the disqualification also. Only a quiet limit is stopped. You are comparing that with what? With the fact that if you don't do this and stay and make the 10 schedule a dead letter and install a new government on the basis of ignoring the 10 schedule, that is much less reversible by sheer passage of a few days than your right to challenge. Today, minus what is the whole argument? It's a scramble dead, it's a fake accompli, your lordships can't reverse it. It's one year down the line. That's the real argument today. That's the argument we are facing. Now, let me give you another bizarre example against myself. These are not one of the normal examples, whereas I don't know of, except a very few number of cases, where you have the courage of conviction to resign and recontest. That resignation is impeded. It happens. There are two or three judgments we have. But normally, whereas, let me assume against myself that I resign because of my high standards and my resignation is not accepted by the speaker. That's the worst I can assume against myself, Willis. Right. I can't assume something more than that, Willis. Again, Willis, the speaker can only reject my resignation and disqualify me. He cannot do anything more. The speaker cannot say that you shall, Willis, do this or that. He, he, he'll at the most say, I reject your uh, uh, resignation and I disqualify you. Same remedy. That remedy, a lordship will stay in two seconds, Willis. Suppose your lordship had an MLA who resigned to fight a new election and the speaker, there may be bizarre cases, I don't know, speaker said, no, I disqualify you. How long will it take a court to give a stay of that order, Malus? 